Number five from the 2010 Higher Maths Paper 2, Optimization. It's actually quite a nice little one. Look, you're going to get the six marks from this simple little cubic expression. The first three marks, however, will be for deriving this expression. So that's the first part of it. You've got these two parabolae. Notice they're actually the same one, except this one's been squashed up a bit. A little rectangle is sandwiched between them. The size of that rectangle will obviously vary according to the width of the base, rather the area of the rectangle. You have to find the maximum area of that rectangle. And all it says is, let TP equal X units. Well, that's what that is. That distance is the X coordinate as far as that. Well, put it in anyway. That's X, which means to find that area, it'll be length times breadth. So the length is obviously 2X. The question really says, find PQ. So for the first one, find PQ. Well, PQ is the difference in the Y coordinates of Q and P. So the problem becomes, what's the Y coordinate of P? Well, that line's horizontal, so the Y coordinate of P will be the same as the Y coordinate at T. So I'll put it down this way. The Y coordinate of P will equal the Y coordinate at T. T, I know the X coordinate is zero, so just put zero into the parabola that goes, the equation that goes through T. That means that it will equal two-fifths of 10 minus zero squared. What's the height of this point? Put zero into this, so it's two-fifths of 10, that's four. So that means the y-coordinate of P is equal to 4. Now you need the y-coordinate of Q. Well, don't expect that to be a number, because you don't know how many along that is. It's going to depend on x. And confusingly, I suppose, you'll just end up with this same equation, because that is the equation for the y-coordinate at Q. The y-coordinate of Q will simply be 10 minus whatever you've decided to call this distance along until you're directly under Q, which you've decided just to call X, so it'll just be 10 minus X squared, which means the distance PQ that you're looking for will be the Y coordinate of Q minus the Y coordinate of P. I don't really need to spell it out, but I'll put it down this way. Oops. Y coordinate of Q minus the Y coordinate of P. That'll be 10 minus X minus 4, so that's 6 minus x squared. So that was like the first mark. That's the second mark because for the first part. Second part said, hence show the area is given by the expression there. Well, the area of the rectangle will simply be length times breadth. The length is 2x. The breadth is 6 minus x squared. So the area expressed in terms of x, is going to be 12x minus 2x cubed. That would be the third mark for part A. Now part B simply says, for six marks, what's the maximum area of this rectangle? The rectangle which has this expression for its area. Well, it depends on x, so, so first of all get the derivative. Since it's in this functional notation, I'll just write it down this way. You could write dA by dx if you like, but this would actually be more appropriate. Not that it matters. Differentiate. So that just becomes a 12. Multiply by the power. Multiply by 3. That'll be 6 times 1 off the power, 6x squared. Now make a statement. Where will you find this maximum, this optimum value? That'll happen when the derivative is equal to 0. You could put a little note at the beginning if you like. You can say... Optimum value means the derivative should be zero. So now you've got this equation. 12 minus 6x squared equals zero. So you've got a couple of options how you might want to solve that. Will I factorize it? Or will I simply say there's only one mention of x, so I'll just get rid of all the bits and bobs. So to be left with x squared, you would take the 12 across, or rather I'll take it this way and read it backwards. So that'd be a 12. Divide by the 6. That gives you a 2, and then finally take the square root of that 2, so the answer is going to be root 2, plus or minus root 2. But since x is positive, it will be x equals root 2, but put a note, since x is greater than 0. That would be more appropriate rather than saying, oh, what does this become? Take out a factor of 6 
and then it's 2 minus x squared equals 0. And then from that you would say, well, if that part equals 0, then either 6 equals 0, which it can't, or x squared equals 2, and then you'd have x equals root 2. I suppose it's just the one more line with the same condition, x is greater than 0. Now, even though it's said in the question, find the maximum area, you still have to justify whether it's a maximum or a minimum. And the usual way that you would do that in the higher would be making up what's known as the nature table. And don't skimp on the nature table. There is only one mark, but if all the appropriate parts aren't there, you won't get that mark. Don't forget to put an x in here and an a dash, the derivative there. The value you want which of course has got an answer of zero, and then either an indication you're testing numbers before and after, or actually putting in numbers before and after. Maybe we'll just put in numbers before and after. That's 1.41, so 1 and 2 would do. Now, you don't need to put the actual values down. Put them in, if you like, from here. It's only the signs that matter which way the gradients are going. So at 1, that's going to be 12 take away 6, which is positive 6. The only thing that matters is positive. Put in the 6 if you like. At 2, it'll be 6 times 4 is 24. That's a negative 12. Put in negative 12 if you like. But it's only the negative that matters. But you have to put in either the signs or the numbers here. Don't just put in the slopes. Under that you can show it's going up, it's going along, it's going down to justify that you've got, in fact, a maximum. Now the question didn't just say find the value of x for which the area is a maximum, it said find the maximum area, we'll just pop that back into the equation for the area. So that means the area at root 2 will be 12 times, I'll put it in this way, root 2, minus 2 times root 2 cubed. Now I suppose it is paper 2, so you could just press the buttons, but I would tend to think, what's this part here? A root 2 times a root 2 times a root 2 would be a 2 times a root 2, so that's 4 lots of root 2. So altogether the answer is 8 root 2 units squared. And why not finish it off with a statement? Maximum area is 8 root 2 units squared when x equals root 2 units. Now, an alternative to demonstrating it's a maximum using the nature table would be to use the second derivative. If that's the first derivative, then the second derivative, which just means differentiating again, in other words, finding the rate at which the gradients are changing, would simply be, that's a constant would disappear, would be negative 12x, which means at x equals root 2, the gradients are changing at a rate of negative 12 root 2. Now, negative, a negative rate of change means they're slowing down. They're heading up, so then they'll be heading down eventually. And a negative means, maybe you should put the working in, so that means that that is less than zero, which means that you've got a maximum. That would do instead of a nature table. But you would need the second derivative, the value of the second derivative, and then the statement. You need those three parts. But apart from that, part B was really quite straightforward.